I've taken this four by eight sheet of um, styrofoam. It's Dow residential sheeting insulation. It's seven dollars and fifty cents at Lowe's for a four by eight sheet. It's a half inch thick. You can see, and it's super lightweight, but it's extremely dense. You can see, I can, you can mash it, and it's super, super dense. And this stuff peels really easy. There's a, a slight onion skin on this, but um, once you get it started, if I can get it started, you can see it just peels really, the whole thing, the whole sheet will just peel right off. The first four sheets I glued together, cut out this compartment, and then I glued an extra sheet on the outside, and then I took a bandsaw, and just cut out the desired shape I wanted and use the belt sander to get the remaining section. And it is extremely stiff. You see I took a hot coat hanger and poked it through there and made my, you see the little tube I've got in there, just ran a hot coat hanger all the way through to the uh, compartment and that's where I'm going to hook my servos up and control surfaces. Alright, this is my wing. As you can see, I've taken two pieces of the foam and glued them together, kind of offset them, and I've already started sanding the front. Um, what I did is kind of print off the standard airfoil like that, and uh, that's the way I'm shaping my wing, so, or at least one I'm going after. All right, well, after about 10 minutes and a very large pile of styrofoam dust on the floor, you can kind of see the general shape that we're accomplishing here from that pretty decent airfoil. I am going to cover it and I am going to cut ailerons out of that also um, but if you're not planning on covering it leave it about a quarter of an inch thick down there and that'll be plenty um, thin enough and uh, still have you a good looking. You can and you can completely uh, fly this just like it is. You can see here this fuselage is solid as a rock and it's completely smooth all over. Um, the only reason I'm going to cover it is to get rid of those lines right there from the uh, styrofoam being glued back together but um, it's just fine the way it is. If you, if you don't want to cover it um, you don't have to. You can see I got my motor mounted up there now on my firewall. On the firewall what I did is uh, take four dowel rods, drill four holes into the fuselage and I doubt, uh, glued four dowel rods into the fuselage, flush with the nose of it. And then I took this piece of uh, plywood here, glued it onto the dowel rods and the and the nose of the plane because it was all solid right there. It's not hollow. And once I had it glued on, I ran four small wood screws into the dowel rods. So now that it's being held in by the dowel rods that are encased inside the fuselage, they go back about three inches. Plus, it's being glued. It's been glued onto the front of the nose and screwed into the dowel rods. So there's no way that's coming loose. All right, change of plans. I got the wing done last night, and today when I went to cut the dihedral or cut the uh, slots in to make the dihedral, I got to looking at this thing, and it looks like it's going to be. I, I thrusted the engine on, and it's got a severe amount of thrust. Um, I put the carbon fiber spar in this wing and left it flat because it looks like it's going to be pretty daggum aerobatic. So um, I left the wing flat. I've got my ailerons cut out. What I did is tape the area. The first one I didn't. I made a mistake and I had to go back. But I taped the area top and bottom before I cut the uh, ailerons out because that is so thin. I'll show you one of the ailerons here. Um, it's really really thin and this foam just kind of bowed up so I uh, taped it before I cut it. Worked really well. Um, you'll see I, gl I glued the carbon fiber spar in there. I burnt the groove in there with a soldering iron. Um, just used a straight edge and ran a soldering iron down and it worked really well glued a uh, tube of this carbon fiber right here in. It's about, a, uh, I believe it's five millimeter outer diameter. Um, once I got that in, I went to glue these uh, little tubes in. I got some of this little small tube right here and I went to glue it in and apparently this foam is, you can't even use foam, I've got the foam safe CA. I've used that one and I tried another one and both of them melt the foam clean through as you can see right there. Um, so I caught it in time and, and managed to dry it all up out of there. I even used kicker on it to try to instantly cure it <clears throat> and that didn't work either. So um, I ended up using my hot glue gun right there. I uh, glued the pieces in there and I've got my controls for my ailerons here. Went ahead and dug out a hole in the center and got my servo mounted there. And uh, before I actually permanently mount the servo, I'm going to remove it and cover the wing 
Um, I'm going to cover the aileron separate and then I will we'll put them in, in their place. And uh, that aileron will just push on onto that wire and then install whatever kind of hinges you want. If you want to tape your hinges, um, I actually went out and got some of these. I'm cheating. I know I was supposed to build this thing really, really cheap, but I got this package of hinges for 50 cents on clearance at a uh, hobby shop. So I'm still within the budget. And those hinges will work a lot better than the, uh, the tape wheel on ailerons. All right, I kind of skipped the uh, process of me covering the plane because I didn't have anyone to film and my hands were covered in the uh, diluted glue mix that um, I was using. But what I did, you take this brown paper, comes on a roll like this, you can get it at Lowe's for $1.50. You take uh, a bowl and mix Elmer's glue or any kind of white glue with water, dilute it down. Um, I don't I don't know the mixture. I just you want it milky, but you don't want it too thick. If it's too thick, it won't soak into the paper. So kind of experiment with your own mixture to uh, see what soaks in. But um, dip the paper in there is the best for smaller surfaces like the uh, elevators and rudders and things like that. But this long surface, I usually just put a coat on with a paintbrush onto the fuselage. And then I just put the paper on top of it, and then once you've got it somewhat adhered to, uh, it, it'll be wet, and it stays wet for a long time. This is still really tacky, um, but uh, you leave it on there for about 15, 20 seconds. It'll start to get tack up a little bit, and then take a paintbrush and dab it in the glue, and then brush the top surface with the glue also. So the bottom surface will will adhere from what you brushed on the foam. The top surface will uh, you'll get to put a light coating on it. And uh, once it dries, it hardly weighs anything. This brown paper is super light. Um, all the liquid evaporates, but what you're left with is a really hard shell. And uh, what I did on this, uh, this is did the bottom half. When I do the top, I'll wrap it down over top of this. And when it dries, sometimes you'll get wrinkles in it. You'll see some wrinkles um, like that right there. But when it dries, it's really hard. And you can just sand those wrinkles down um, with some like 220 or maybe 320 grit sandpaper. Um, and that's paintable because the Elmer's glue dries the water evaporates the glue dries It makes a very paintable surface and you can use any kind of paint you want even an enamel although they're heavy um, so <clears throat> Use your own judgment on, on as far as weight goes on your plane, but I'm going to be using This luster coat um, Made by top flight. It's a high gloss fuel proof model paint um, I tested a spot on some um, dried paper that I did on the wing already, and uh, it coats really nice. Um, should work well. All right, here's my finished product. I know I skipped a lot of uh, steps, like the uh, some of the paper covering and the painting and things like that. But that's just uh, common knowledge um, stuff. And I was trying to save some time on this video. You're only about 10 minutes, so um, I went through a couple of different mounting mechanisms or mounting. Uh, ways for the uh, wing but that's essentially what I came up with that little thing's just hot glued onto the, the final covering and if you look right there I took a drill bit and heated it up with a, a cigarette lighter and burnt two holes right there and right there and inserted the dowel rod about three inches down in there and then I glued in those little pieces of plywood um, around just to kind of support it um, and drilled two holes in there and that's what my wing mounts into it's got the two carbon fiber struts on the front I got some paint on them, but it'd be all right. Um, but slide in, in through the two little holes, and then you just put two screws down through there, and it holds the wing on. Um, the motor's mounted. You can see I've got a small air hole right there. Air goes in there, and it comes out the bottom right there. Got my little ultralight wheels on there, some 1 8 wire bent, a little piece of plywood to hold that on right there. And there's a piece of plywood up inside there also. Um, holding holding the landing gear in place my little tail wheel on the back tiny little tail wheel I wish I could have went with a little bit bigger one, but again, I was trying to keep my budget under ten dollars on this plane um, I, I believe I went over by about a dollar after I bought all the control rods and um, Wheels and things of that nature, but uh, I've got about eleven maybe twelve dollars in in this plane and um, You don't have to paint it if you don't want the coverings fine You could have flown it just as foam and it would be a lot lighter. I believe I added about ten ounces to this plane by adding the covering and the paint and things like that um, with the with the glue and and all and if I'd have flown it as a just a foam it would have been completely fine um, but I did paint it just to give it some looks and uh, control rods you can see right there I come out and got the control rods bent up um, I'll try to get the uh, first flight on it probably going out tomorrow or the day after tomorrow and uh, try to get you some flight video of it.